So, and our first question about key trends in the global mobile media market. Sure. Um, I would pick out, you know, a couple of, you know, particularly significant trends in the media market. And one of those big ones is really a shift in business models as well. You know, um, if you think about 10, 15 years ago or, you know, buying physical content where you would buy a DVD, you'd have that to own for a certain price. And what we're seeing now is a radical change in that, that we're seeing uh, very often the content is distributed digitally, it's distributed through applications, and those applications are typically free to download and use in the first instance. So, for example, services like Spotify, services like Netflix, and a lot of mobile games as well, where we're seeing that the game itself is free to download, and then there's an in-app purchase perhaps to you know, enhance your experience of the game. And likewise, with a lot of these uh, music and video uh, applications that uh, it'll often be monetized through advertising perhaps and then you can pay in some fashion uh, to enhance your experience. Um, so consumers are getting more and more used to having that access to content free at least initially and then perhaps that being you know revenue getting uh, generated further down the line. And I think the other key thing is that consumers are getting very, very used that when they buy a piece of content or buy access to a piece of content, that they expect to see that on every device that they own. You know, it's not tied to one single device anymore. That if I buy a movie, I want to be able to see that on my tablet, on my mobile phone, on my laptop, and possibly even on my widescreen TV as well. Okay, so, and next question about uh, career strategy. What should they do? To, um, to to stop turning in just stupid piping yeah. and how they could uh, cope with OTT players like Netflix, YouTube and so on. Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, that's something that certainly, you know, carriers are right to be concerned about, you know. If we look at, at what's happened with carriers up to now, you know, they've very often tried to to play in the, the value chain themselves and a number of carriers have tried to you know broaden their own offering um, to offer video or to offer music to consumers and generally speaking although there are some exceptions generally speaking those strategies haven't really worked i mean you know a carrier brand isn't seen as a, as a media brand you know it's not as sexy mm -hmm. let's put it that way um, but I think what we're seeing now um, is that you know carriers are more and more willing to partner with those brands and bring those brands to consumers. And the point I was making earlier actually about changing business models, that's actually starting to, to help the carriers. So I think that partnership model um, works quite well with some of these business models. So um, what we're seeing is, for example, uh, bundles. So mm -hmm. um, if you buy a data plan with a device, um, you know, you can pay a little bit more to get perhaps a little bit more data, but as an alternative, maybe you pay a little bit more and you get Spotify as okay. part of that deal. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, um, you know, I mentioned earlier about the way people are buying content is changing. And I think that helps carriers. So um, as media moves more into a subscription business model, you know, that's very much like, you know, taking a contract, the subscription you have mm -hmm. uh, for, a, for a contract mobile phone. And so it makes sense in many ways to bundle those things together. Um, and I mentioned as well a lot of content being free and then monetized through small, often in-app purchases. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, that's something where the carrier has a big role to play. Um, you know, if we think a little bit about, you know, the Apple iPhone, you know, you have to give your credit card details and you're tied into, you know, Apple's content on iTunes, basically mm -hmm. on that device. Um, now, that's the exception. For pretty much every other operating system, Android and Windows and a lot of the new uh, operating systems that, are, that you see here at the show, you know, Firefox and Tizen, um, they, they, you know, they're trying to convince consumers that they should give them their credit card details, but consumers are very reluctant. You know, these aren't trusted brands. So one of the key, other key roles that a carrier can play is, again, it's around payment. So, you know, if I don't have a credit card, um, you know, to give these companies anyway, um, if I'm not using an Apple iPhone, so I'm, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I, but I want to you know, I'm playing a game, I want to buy, you know, an extra level pack or I want to buy some gems or something like that. Um, how am I going to do that? Well, the carrier billing is by far the best way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you know, there's a role for the carrier there. 
so the two key things would be you know bundling that content and I think the way the media companies have changed their business model is starting to align with the carrier business model and then secondly you know these things like in-app purchase and payment processing particularly for consumers that don't have credit cards um, that's very very important and the carrier can effectively you know take a share of media spend through the relatively simple mechanism of, of opening up these payment APIs and they're, they're trusted in the eyes of the consumer as well. You mm -hmm. know, do I trust um, you know, Mozilla that produces Firefox? Not necessarily, but I probably trust my carrier because I have okay. you know, a monthly contract with them mm -hmm. already. I see. So uh, there are different models uh, to coping with OTT providers and yeah. uh, blocking. The, uh, and what, what about blocking? Is, the, is this model is working or the, um, be, uh, does, it, uh, does it have future for operators or not? I think that's a very short-term solution, basically, okay. that I feel that um, you know, consumers' expectation, as I mentioned, is that you know, I can access a service um, across multiple devices. And if I can access a, a service across every device apart from a mobile phone, mm -hmm. if I get that phone from a particular operator, I'm maybe not going to go with that particular operator. You know, maybe I'm going to want to go with an operator that doesn't block that particular okay. service because that service is important to that consumer. Mm -hmm. So you know, they, they look at things perhaps um, you know a little bit differently. Um, and you know, you look at um, how people are using uh, you know messaging services like WhatsApp. Okay, you know, an operator could initially say, right, we're going to block that, but think how many okay. you know teenagers that are on pay as you go type contract. Mm -hmm. They're going to very, very quickly shift to a different operator so that they can keep using that service and keep talking to their friends. So it's a short-term solution, um, but it's not a good long-term solution. And I think, like I say, you know, this, this type of partnership business model mm -hmm. where you know, you're bundling that service in with a price plan and, and actually thinking about messaging services, we have seen examples of that in, in India, for example. Um, or you know, you're actually opening up your payment mechanism to help those companies drive revenue from mm -hmm. their own consumers, but the operator is also able to take a share because they're processing that payment anyway. So I don't think it's about you know pushing back against OTT players. I think it's about seeing how you can work with OTT players and either help grow the operator's own business um, by offering these bundles or taking a share of the revenue that these OTT players are creating mm -hmm. by providing that billing mechanism. Okay. Nice. Uh, thank you, David. And to ask question about what do you expect from the show today? Well, um, you know, Mobile World Congress is always, the, you know, pretty much the, the busiest time of the year in the mobile yeah, exactly. industry. So, you know, very exciting. A lot of product launches. Um, the things that I'm probably most interested in uh, right now, um, I have to say, um, you know, I've, I've kind of already mentioned some of those new operating systems, you know, Firefox and Tizen. Um, I think they've got a pretty strong you know, chance for success in the market, actually. Mm -hmm. So I'm very interested to see what apps and services are, are already available on those devices, because you know, we've even seen an announcement already with a, you know, a $25 smartphone available from you know, Firefox. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you're talking about you know, a device like that potentially opening up um, you know, TV music content to a whole set of consumers that have, you know, never experienced something like that before. So I think that's very exciting.